you visited this Titanic Taurus sub. I'm wondering if you can just tell us a little bit about what your experience was like, not just inside the submersible, but this entire experience getting out there to the North Atlantic. I was anticipating a once in a lifetime experience uh, and I got it. Uh, Ocean Gate, the company invited us from CBS Sunday Morning, a uh, cameraman, a producer and me to come aboard and in theory, to document one of their dives to the Titanic for which they were charging a quarter of a million dollars per person. Uh, we didn't pay that. <laughs> we were there to do a story. Um, I was very, very, very excited. And then I saw the actual submersible. It's a one of a kind. Uh, as Stockton Rush, the CEO and the inventor of the sub puts it, every, every submersible is a prototype. In other words, there is no spare. There was no version 1.0 before 2.0. This is it, it's a one of a kind. And as such, there were parts of it that seemed to me to be less sophisticated than I was guessing. You know, that you, you drive it with a PlayStation video controller, literally a Bluetooth wireless controller. Uh, some of the ballasts are old rusty construction pipes. Um, they, when they seal you in, uh, and they do seal you in, by the way, with 18, there are 18 bolts that seal you in from the outside. And they only do 17 of them because the 18th one is way up high, so they don't bother with it. So there were certain things that looked like cut corners. Uh, but Stockton made me aware that the, the part that we care about, where the people are, the pressure capsule, is very high end designed in conjunction with NASA, the University of Washington, uh, carbon fiber, five inches thick, unassailable. David, um, you signed a very fat waiver <laughs> before getting inside this thing. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the, uh, the items on that waiver? This is adventure travel. This is for adrenaline seekers, people who live on the edge, the kind of clientele that would take a, a Blue Origin rocket ride, for example. Um, and so, yeah, it is very dangerous. It's an in international waters, so it's not supervised or regulated or inspected by any governmental body. The waiver, basically, it's eight paragraphs of ways that you could get permanently disabled or killed. Um, it, it outlines the fact that the ship you're on to carry you out to the site is not a consumer ship, a tourist ship. It is a working petroleum vessel. Um, and so that they're, it's not designed for those who are you know, dainty of foot. So there are big heavy doors and the decks are wet and it's, it's dangerous. Then there are dangers involved with getting into the submersible. Then there are dangers involved with going down to see the Titanic or even going down at all. There are dangers involved with coming back up. So they make very clear, every paragraph ends with, I understand that this may result in permanent disability or death. And David, uh, in your reporting, the watercraft actually went missing for several hours last year. Can you explain what happened there? Um, it did not go missing. Um, I, I tweeted at one point, there was a time last year when the sub was lost for three hours, but that, that, that could be taken two ways. And what I meant was the sub was lost. It couldn't find its way. It didn't know where it was. It was on the bottom of the sea, could not find the Titanic. The ship above knew where they were. The ship on the surface never lost contact with them and was trying to guide them to the ship, but they never found it. And after three hours, they gave up and rose to the surface without ever having seen the ship. Got it. So in other words, completely different than what we're seeing or what we assume to have happened here. Completely different. To my knowledge, in the three summers they've been doing this, they have never lost communication before. And in speaking with uh, Ocean Gate officials about what would be done in, a, in an emergency situation like this one, did they have a, a plan for, for this? I have to say it's a very safety conscious culture on that ship, in that outfit. There are checklists and inspections and twice daily mandatory briefings. And, you know, we, we all had to get into the sub and that you showed us where this fire extinguisher was. We had to practice putting on the smoke masks in case there was smoke. 
nobody ever said, here's what you do if we lose communication and are trapped under the sea, because it, it just seems impossibly remote. That, that just doesn't seem like something that would happen. This thing has so many ways to come back to the surface. Even if you're unconscious, this thing will come back to the surface on its own after 12, 14 hours in the sea. It has sandbags hanging from dissolving links that the seawater eats away and then the sandbags drop and you come up even if you've passed out. So to me, they'd really thought through the likely problems, air, pressure, darkness, getting to the surface. And David, I'd imagine this has been an emotional week for you having gone through this experience as well. Um, what was your first thought this week when the sub went missing? Honestly, my first thought was, eh, it's a glitch. I mean, these things glitch all the time. Um, as you know from my CBS Sunday Morning story, on our day to dive, we only got 37 feet down, and then they canceled, they aborted the dive and made us go back to the ship because of some little malfunction. And that was it for me. I never saw the Titanic. I, I just got an aborted dive. Um, but that's part for the course. For every five-day excursion Ocean Gate makes to the Titanic, that, that could be as many as five different dives to the Titanic. Most weeks, they make it down once. The most they've ever made it down is twice in a week. And some weeks, it's not at all. For example, this summer, there, there were weeks where they, the weather is so bad, they never even got down. And the, the dive that began this past Sunday was the first dive of this eight-day expedition.